Hi guys and welcome. Today is Sunday, October 22nd, and we're going to finish up where we left off yesterday with that Christmas classic bundle. Um, just want to get on first, um, tell you there's going to be a little bit of a glare. Even though it's a beautiful day here in Chicagoland today, it's still frightfully cold and it's kind of, not frightfully cold, it's chilly. We went out on the roadster yesterday, so that's why my hair's all wingy like it is. Um, yeah, see, little, little wings. Anyway, I went out in the roadster yesterday and <laughs> had to have the seat warmers on, even though we had the top down, but it was a nice drive. But yeah, so I have my overhead lights on today. So there might be a little bit of a glare on the stamping surface and I apologize about that beforehand. But let's go ahead and get down to the stamping surface and let's go ahead and go with that Christmas classic bundle and do a card and show you the examples I made yesterday. All right, wanna make sure that that microphone's not gonna come on because you know sometimes that happens. Yeah, and I'm sitting down today. Um, usually I stand up on my side desk or my side counter and stamp there. But today I'm just gonna sit down, huh? <laughs> Maybe between doing the Roadster yesterday and a little bit of putting up some lights for Halloween slash the holidays. Um, maybe I kind of overdid it, I'm not sure. So anyway, let's talk about Christmas classics. So yesterday we went through the different stamps and pieces. So today we're gonna go ahead and finish up. Now. I don't know if you watch my other videos, but I do a live series called Color Me Crazy, where I take two colors and use just those two colors to kind of come up with different concepts for stamping, techniques, stuff like that. So um, yesterday I did the bokeh technique. So I thought, let's do that today for um, this finish up card. And that way uh, we can go ahead and kind of cross reference to the two different uh, videos that I have done. All right, so let's grab out my red and where's my dark blue. Even though Peacock's kind of more green in my opinion, I'm gonna use my blue. All right, so bokeh technique. I brought out my silicone uh, table saver today just because this wipes off easily. And even if it does get stained, it's not a big deal. It's that silicone mat, it doesn't move it doesn't move um, and it wipes up fairly clearly now if you're worried about getting it on your stamp surface you can always put here let me see here's a little piece of uh, paper we can put underneath there let me go ahead and move this back over here sorry that was kind of near my speaker hope it wasn't too loud so let's go ahead and we're just going to add some color. The bokeh technique is kind of fabulous in the fact that you're going to take colors. You know what? I always do this. I always do this and I clean off on my lid instead of getting my pad or my work surface really dirty. Sometimes I'll use my uh, piercing mat, but then you have to change that color a lot. So why not just use your lid? Cause then you can go back into that color. It's going to be a little more muted cause you've moved it around and we'll add in a color. Ooh, I'm really moving my desk. Sorry about that. Let's get some color in there. All right. So I think that's enough now with the pretty peacock. Let's go ahead and go with the cherry cobbler. And the reason I'm using these two together, just so you know, oh, I already have some color down. Beautiful. Um, it's because I'm gonna show you what I did and you'll see why I put these two colors together. Let's see, let's go ahead and put some color there. I'm just gonna fill it in with this cherry cobbler, very strong color. All right, I think I want to go back though and put some more peacock in up here. All right, go ahead and bring back that peacock and put a little more in there. Cause I feel like now, like it's a little bit lacking. I 
want some stronger color in the middle there, but I don't want it to be too strong. There we go. All right. I think that looks good. Put a little there. All right. Let me grab that right again because now I feel like I have a lot of. All right. So there we are. So there's our colored background. Let me move those out of the way. Then I have, this is just a piece of, um, I don't know if you can tell, it was the backing for a 12 by 12 pack of paper that came in. But I've taken different circles that I have in punches and I've made little, a little template out of that. So it's a little bit, it works good with this just because it's a little bit of a glossier uh, cardboard. So it works really well for this technique. And yes, my craft white pad is extremely old, but you know what? I have refills for it. So it doesn't matter what case it comes in, it works well. And yes, when you do this technique, you might transfer a little bit of color on to your stamp pad. But remember, you have to re-ink this fairly often anyway. So that color is going to sink down in. As you can see, I used it yesterday and I had a lot of Tahitian, I think it was Tahitian Tide and bubble bath in it. And as you can see, there's not a lot on there right now. So it just sinks down in and then eventually I will re-ink it. They say you're supposed to re-ink it before you use it every time. I find I don't have to, but there you go. And I like using a finger dauber. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to get a nice coloring of that craft white into that circle template. See what I'm saying? How you see a little bit of a tinge of pink there or whatever that color that was cherry cobbler. Sorry, not pink. All right. So let's get a nice good circle of white in there. I'm going to lift this up so you can see. See how that is? But as it dries, it's going to, and I'm going to use, do this big circle. As it dries, it's going to become more opaque. And I'll show you what I mean. The only bad thing about this technique is I do a bunch at a time because you have to allow it to dry. This is the craft ink. And you can use, you can use your heat tool, but I like to let it dry naturally. So now we are getting a little bit of color. I don't know if you can see that. Just a little hint of color on that pad that's transferring from this cardstock, but it's going to sink to the bottom and we're going to have to re-ink this anyway because I can tell that it's getting a little bit drier. So I'll probably re-ink this tonight because then I probably won't be crafting again. Well, I'll be doing my Watch It Wednesday Finish Up Friday series, but I probably won't be using the Craft White for that. All right, let's go over here now. Get that covered up. Yeah, you can tell I need to re-ink this because it's getting really hard to get that white on there where it covers up. And you can see that this is already starting to come through. As it dries, you're going to get more. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do. And you have to be careful because see how I'm getting my. Uh, because you have the white on here. So I need to be careful that I don't touch my cardstock and transfer that. So let's get a little bit there. Oops, I moved it, so that means it's time to go. So here's this. You can already see as it dries. And then I always like to go in and just kind of do a little bit just to get those lighter circles on there. All right, I'll put that aside to dry. I can bring out my heat tool, like I said, and that will go ahead and uh, work well to dry it, but I'm going to leave it off to the side here just so you can see as it's drying. You'll see how it's getting lighter. Is that completely on the surface here? Let me see. There we go. There. Now you can see. See how, especially here, see how that color is coming up through as it dries? All right. To clean this off, like I said, it's cardboard, but it's a little bit of a coated cardboard. 
or I don't know it's cardboard. Um, it's like backing paper. I just go ahead and wipe this off. Now this is going to curl, just so you know. That gets all of that white off on there. It's going to curl. So what I usually do is I do it along the back side too. And then I just lay it off to the side to dry and it'll dry flat. All right, and this is good for about, I would say about 20, 30 uses. Then after using the baby wipes to clean it off, then it tends to get where it's broken down a lot. Let's get that white off of there. All right, and that's still drying, but let me show you with the ones I did yesterday. Here's the one I did yesterday. Um, and there I had moved my template, so I got white on there. So I had a little bit of a streak there. But you can see how when it dries, it's showing those lights. Uh, I'm sorry, the bokeh lights, the bokeh circles. But let me do this really quick. Oh, you know what? I should take this off because this is wet. Not good. Um, let me go ahead and go like that. So, oh, and I must have still had a little bit on me. Maybe that's from yesterday. So you can see how it went ahead and transferred that. Here's another one I did. Let me put it on the back side of that so you can see it against that color. And I know my lights overhead are kind of drying out. Let me go turn off my lights and see if that helps. I mean, it might be light enough out now where it's not so dark. Yeah, a little bit better. All right, so there you can see how those light, those focus circles actually come through. All right. So what I also made yesterday is I went ahead and this dried overnight. This is one of the, uh, those edges that you cut, that we cut out yesterday, that dye. And then I used the enamel effects. Ooh, I got some white on there. There's something out there. So anyway, use the, the enamel effects and I have the pearlized enamel effects. This is the basics. So it's the white, red, and black. There's also, I think, a metallic one that's in the current annual catalog. So anyway, so I cut these out. This was that season's greeting stamp with that matching die. So here's that die that we used. Then we use this for the greeting and went around that season's greeting. Let me see now I can get this back in there. I almost have to draw a map. It's so tight to put those in there. All right. So this is what I had and I could mount it on this. It's going to look perfectly lovely, but I do like getting, I want to see what it looks like over this now. I'm just going to lay it over this and let me show you what I plan on doing. Let me move this off to the side. Let me put a little glue, green glue on the inside because my layer is just a little bit smaller than this cardstock. And I'm not going to be able to really push it down because that craft white is still wet. You can see though it's mostly drying. So let me go ahead and get that so I have a good border. I'm going to touch wherever the white is not. Alright, so there's that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pop it up. Let me go ahead and grab my dimensionals. I think I want to use the full dimensionals and not, I have full ones and then I have ones I've cut in half. Um, but let's go ahead and use the full dimensionals. Don't really want to push down too hard. I have found out with this enamel at one point I did my birthday cards with the enamel dots and I set them on top of one another to dry, you know, not with, not with any weights or anything on it. And came back next morning and all my uh, pearls were flat. I always like to think that's the reason why we have those um, 
flat back adhesives now that I, cre I somehow had a part in that. All right, so let's go ahead. Before I put this down, let me put this upside down here. I am going to put it on my white card base. So again, let's go a little bit on the inside. It's really hard to see the glue white on white. Again, I'm going to push this down and not push anywhere where there is white. All right. So as this dries even more, you're going to see, let's see, I'm going to put it right there. There you are. You're already seeing it here. It almost looks kind of like because I pushed it down really hard, so I got that edge. It almost looks like a crescent moon, or that'd be a waning moon. I don't know. But there you are. There is an example using that bokeh technique. I will link yesterday's Color Me Crazy video to this so you can see the the makings of these two because that's what I did in yesterday's video okay let me see where did I put oh here we go go ahead and take this away let's go ahead and show you the cards we did let me take away my brushes there we go so there's the one we just did my camera must be mounted a little crooked oh and I kind of mounted that crooked too oh well forgive me. All right. So there's that. Here's using that Christmas with that greeting. You know, I said you could use the different greetings to match up. Did a little bit of a background technique, just the tone on tone, um, smoky slate on smoky slate, and then a couple of the cutouts there. Move this just a little bit over. I don't want to touch any of that craft white. Let me get it right on the edge there. All right, here's another one I did using those cutouts and then just, um, I think I'm going to put some jewels here. In fact, should we do that right now? Let me take it out. This is my jewels that are in the current mini or online exclusives. So let me go ahead and grab out my, one of my, take your piff take your pick tools. These are the Faceted Gems Trio Pack. Oops, sorry. Let's go ahead and put, put a dot there. We'll put a different color there. This is more the gray dot. All right. My putty is not Time to change the putty out, I guess. Go ahead. Let me kind of put that. I'm looking at the camera versus here. And then, oh, now the putty's really come out. Now I'm going to put one right there. All right, there. So there's that one. Move this down a little bit. All right. Here's another one where we used that frame cut out. This is the one that I actually ran through on my um, magnetic plate. So I got the crisp, clear cutouts. So there's that one here. I don't know if I've scored any of these. They're all kind of trying to flip up on me. And the last one I did yesterday, there's that one again. This also was a technique I did yesterday, of course, I've done that four square a lot. Oops, let me bring that up a little bit. Sorry. Let me bring this up. That way you can see that one. There you go. A little bit better. There you go. I kind of cover that one up. Sorry. So this one was using the four square technique where you get four backgrounds from one sheet of cardstock. Um, that you stamp yourself. So again, that was on yesterday's Color Me Crazy 
um, video. So that's it, guys. That would be, let me see if I can uh, go back to here. So that's it. Hope you had a great time uh, watching me do this. <laughs> I get tongue-tied when I uh, have to look at myself talking. But yes, so great examples, great bundle. Thanks for joining me. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you could. Send me a comment. I love comments. Also, tell your friends or share my video. I really want to get a few more viewers out there. I'm trying to get to a level, and I think it's just 500 subscribers. Now, I was watching a lady who said she was getting almost 100 subscribers a day. Don't know how that happens, but sign me up. Anyway, I'm just trying to get to 500 so I can send out um, little blurbs ahead of time showing you what we're going to be working on. So if you find it in your heart to share the video or to subscribe if you haven't already, I would much appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great Sunday. And most all, be safe in the upcoming week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.